Okay guys, so we've got our Vortec 5.3 liter engine back. Uh, the block was just rebuilt, you know, new timing chain, everything, new cam bearings. So we're gonna start off by putting our timing cover on. I've gone ahead and re replaced the uh, front main seal here. And I have our gasket, which goes like this, can only go one way, as you can see, there's a little curve right there, or it's like a plug or some sort. Anyways, so we're gonna go ahead and set this in. I'm gonna get the cover in, get the bolts kind of placed in, and then we're gonna torque it down. All right, my timing cover's in place with my bolts kind of just placed in there. Uh, so now I'm gonna torque this down evenly to 12 Newton meters. I'm pretty much gonna go back and forth like that. Um, so 12 Newton meters or 106 inch pounds, get that done, and then we'll get on to the next step. So now that the timing cover is finished, we're gonna do the rear cover here, which is also a part of the rear main seal. Um, you can just replace the rear main seal or you get the whole thing that comes all together, which will have a, I guess you call it inverted seal, as you can see here. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and place this in. Now the gasket for the cover only can go one way. Pretty much you can just line up with the back cover here, just because of this, that's pretty much the only thing that kind of causes this curve. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this in, get the bolts going, make sure that this lip stays right, and get ready to torque it back. All right, y'all, so the cover's in with that rear main seal. This new inverted style is actually simple, which pretty much goes on. Uh, I believe if you just replace the rear main seal, it comes with a cover, or like a little tool that slide on. But anyways, so now that these bolts are kind of just placed in, I'm gonna torque them all down to 22 foot-pounds, just kind of spreading out evenly, and then we'll get to the next step. So we have our rear cover installed, 22 foot-pounds for those, uh, I think those 12 bolts, I think. Anyways, so now we have our oil pan baffle that we'll throw in here. Um, it only goes one way. It says front right there. Either or, it really won't fit the other direction. So we're gonna put that in, and uh, we're gonna pretty much do all of our nuts except for these two here, because it does hold the pickup. Or you know, I'll go ahead and throw that in as well. So we'll go ahead and throw the uh, pickup tube in there. Be sure to uh, lube up the the O-ring. You will lose oil pressure there uh, if you split it. So be sure to actually make sure that goes in properly. And pretty much, I don't want to go back in here. So um, we're gonna go ahead and put these on, and I believe these nuts get torqued down to nine newton meters or like 80 inch pounds, something like that. So nine newton meters. Let me go ahead and get the pickup tube in and then I'll thread all the nuts in. Okay, also I have my nuts in place. Um, just a little FYI, you will wanna put the baffle nuts in first. This does get in the way right here. I had to take it back off to put this one here, just this one. Um, so once I put those in, I went ahead and put the pickup tube in, lubed up this one. Um, it does state to make sure this goes all the way in flush before putting this bolt in just to prevent that O-ring from splitting. And then went ahead and do that. So the baffle itself, the nuts here, get torqued down nine Newton meters or 80 inch pounds. This one is 12 Newton meters, 106 inch pounds for the bolt for the pickup tube. And surprisingly for the two nuts that hold the baffle to, um, or the oil pickup tube to the baffle, to the block, those get 25 Newton meters or 18 uh, foot pounds. So I'm gonna do the baffle first. That's our baffle, these here, and that. So I'm gonna take, torque all those down, and then we get to the oil pan. So. Okay, guys. So almost time for the oil pan here. But before we do so, a little FYI, um, I do have to take up to do the baffle. You really need to take off this. Sucks. The baffle first, then this. It's just because this one right here. Anyways, so our oil pan. Um, you will need to rivet it in just to hold it in place. There's two there. And then we're gonna also place some silicone where the timing cover meets the block as well as where the rear cover meets the block. So I'll put a little silicone on those and then uh, we're gonna put the oil pan on. So just to show the location of the silicone, there you are. And now I'm gonna go ahead and place the oil pan. Uh, a little FYI, there are two separate bolts. This one goes pretty much everywhere and these long ones go right here to the rear cover. So. I'm gonna place the oil pan and get all my bolts placed and get ready to torque. All right, so my oil pan is just pretty much just placed with my bolts just kind of threaded in. Oop, missed one. Um, so since there are two separate, are two different types of bolts, uh, there are gonna be two different types of torque. So the bigger ones, aka bigger not in length, uh, will be 25 newton meters or 18 foot pounds. And these two small ones will be um, 12 newton meters or it's like 106 inch pounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and torque this down, you know, doing it evenly around, and we're pretty much good for next time. 
Okay, y'all, so oil pan's done. I uh, went ahead and threw the knock sensors in here, one here, one there. Those get torqued down to 18 foot pounds. Went ahead and put the crank sensor in as well. I just put that snug. Same with the cam sensor here. So now we're gonna go ahead and get our mounts in. I already have one side kind of loosely in here, as you can see right there. Now there is not a left and a right side for the mount, they both go same part. Um, so I'm gonna slap the other one on and torque the four bolts on each end to 37 foot pounds, or some of y'all can just zap it in with the gun. So we get those mounts in, and then we're gonna turn the motor over and get to the next step. All right, oh, so my mounts are in, I turn the motor over. We're gonna now place the water pump on. So uh, there's some two gaskets with the exact same part number. You just pretty much flip them. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the new water pump just placed right on and just set it in place and we'll get ready to torque it. All right, y'all, my water pump is in place with my six number 10s all around. So this gets tightened down in two phases. The first pass will be 11 foot pounds and the second phase will be 22 foot pounds. So I'm gonna get that torqued and then we'll get to the next step of just putting the brackets back on and then we'll start working on top here. Okay guys, so my two brackets are in place, the idler pulley as well as the compressor bracket. Um, the bolts will go here. As you can see the AC compressor sits there and everything here. Uh, this is smaller than this one. Um, anyways, so 37 foot pounds if you're gonna torque them or not, whatever, however you do it. Um, I did not have to replace a the thermostat because my water pump came with it. But for those of you who will, these are 11 foot pounds. So um, we're now gonna go ahead and install the valve lifter manifold or the valley cover. Uh, before you do so, go ahead and blow out all these holes, make sure nothing's in there. Uh, once you do that, we're gonna go ahead and just place it down. So let me go ahead and get ready to get it placed down there. Be sure not to grab the middle section here. GM does make a note of not even messing with those. And go ahead and also replace the screen in the oil pressure sensor. So I'm gonna go ahead and place that on, I'm clean this up a little, make sure nothing's on there. And then uh, we'll be pretty much get ready to torque it. Okay guys, so I've torqued down these, um, what is it, like 11 bolts to 18 foot pounds, so this is done. Uh, so next is gonna be our lifters here, the housing. Uh, but before I do all that, I am gonna let them soak for a while, and then we're gonna come back and get ready to put the lifters and the housing in, and then we can finish up by putting our cylinder heads in. So I'm wait probably about, I don't know how long, I gotta double check how long I gotta wait for, but we'll go soak for a minute, and then we'll get back to it. All right, y'all, so starting to the left side of the engine here, I'm going to go ahead and get these uh, lifters in. So the housing here, as you can see, uh, there are two different kinds. They can only really go one way. So as you can see, there's little humps here. They basically each go there. Now the lifters, there's going to be two types of lifters, the ones that are the active fuel management kind and just the ones that don't really do anything. So the active fuel management ones will go into the holes right here. As you can see, there's a difference in size. The bigger ones go there, obviously. And they can only go one way, so you can see there's a channel for it. And um, pretty much, they pretty much only go one way. So let me grab one and just start placing them in and give you all the view. So I've gone ahead and put one in already with this bolt just kind of placed in there. I wanted to show you all the um, lifters here. So the ones that do the active fuel management will have this little guide here and then pretty much just sit in there to keep it in place. And now the other ones, they just kind of go in they only go one way uh, so I'm get this out one hand here so you can see is there's like a little flat point there and everything else is rounded just place it in and just slide it right in now these bolts here will get torqued down to 12 newton meters you don't want to break the housing so I'm gonna go ahead and get those in and then we'll put the head gasket on get ready to put the cylinder head on so my housing is torqued down to 12 newton meters with my lifters in place you know the two four active fuel management lifters and then just the lifters uh, now I got the head gasket on. There is a left and a right side. You see this says front or top or something. So there you are. So now I'm gonna go ahead and place the head on and thread my head bolts on and get ready to torque those down. So my cylinder head's in place. I already torqued it down and pretty much set my push rods and everything here. Just kind of set it there. Uh, reason being is because there's a pretty in-depth sequence here. I'm gonna just leave it right here and talk about it. The first step, you're only going to do one through 10 first, for the three, first three stages. The first uh, step is first you're going to do 22 foot pounds, then a 90 degree turn, and then a 70 degree turn. And then once you do that for one through 10, you're going to go back for 11 through 15 here and do another 22 foot pounds. These are 15 millimeter bolts down here, and those are 10 millimeter bolts. So on my engine here, um, 
pretty much I did that sequence. And one thing I did extra was uh, I'm using a Felpro intake manifold gasket. You have to bend them in and place them under the bolts there. So that's pretty much it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get the set these down and, and get ready to do the torque sequence for the uh, push rods here. Okay guys, so I have my rocker arms torqued down already. Um, so pretty much to start off, you have to have it at TDC on the compression stroke. This is cylinder one left side. For earlier, I forgot to mention that I made a mark to know that this cylinder is at top dead center before I put the head on. Um, so this is TDC here. There's other ways to find out for, for y'all out there, but once you have it at TDC, you're gonna start with tightening the exhaust valves first. So you're gonna do uh, cylinder one and seven first, and then you're gonna come back and do the intake of one, three, and five. Now, once you do that, you're gonna rotate the engine 360 degrees and finish off with the exhaust valves of cylinder three and five, and then do the intake valve for number seven. It's a weird um, order. However, it makes a little more sense once you have both uh, heads on, since I only have one, it's a little different. But when you have both on, it, it makes more sense. Uh, pretty much these all get torqued down to 22 foot-pounds. And now this side is pretty much done. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and just put a little oil in here and close it up. And then we'll do the um, exhaust manifold on this end and get ready to put the other cylinder head on. Okay guys, so I covered up, finished up with the, uh, adding the valve cover here, 12 newton meters for these four bolts. So now we're gonna throw the exhaust manifold on before we head to the other side. Um, the exhaust manifold gets tightened in two stages, first at 11 foot-pounds and then 15 foot-pounds. Uh, there's not really a uh, sequence, but we're going to start from the middle and work our way outward doing the two stages. Okay guys, so valve cover's done, exhaust manifold is in now. A um, little FYI, so these bolts here, you actually need to add thread lock, but they specifically say to not do it on the first three threads. And then uh, once you go in, just put them in starting at 11 foot pounds going you know back and forth and then go back in with 15 foot pounds uh now the studs here are, are when you attach the downpipe that's going to be 37 foot pounds just a little fyi for y'all self later so i'm not going to do a video on that so now this side is done we're going to go ahead and throw the cylinder head on the other side now before i slap everything on here i just want to show you all this here um as you can see it's a little different than the other side the active fuel management lifters will be in the inside portion of the block here versus on the other side it was on the outside so i'm gonna go ahead and get the lifters in torque this down 12 newton meters and then put the head gasket on slap the head on just make y'all's life easier this is the torque sequence for the right cylinder head you're going to start with 22 foot pounds for one through ten then do a 90 degree angle then a 70 degree angle and then a 22 foot pound torque for the last five up top so now we're going to go ahead and get the uh, rocker arms and push rods in and get ready to torque those down Okay, also now for the uh, rocker arms on the right cylinder head. First, you're gonna get on TDC on the compression stroke like we did the other side. And then we will initially start with doing 22 foot-pounds to this one here, the cylinder two exhaust can uh, rocker. Uh, cylinder four, sorry, no, cylinder eight um, exhaust rocker. And then you're gonna do the cylinder four intake rocker. Once you do that, you're gonna rotate the engine around 360 degrees and basically complete the others. Uh, I believe you start, obviously you start with the uh, exhaust side first, apparently. So you're gonna do uh, cylinder six exhaust and cylinder four exhaust, and then finish it up with the intake side of cylinder two, six, and eight. And that's pretty much it for this side. So I'm gonna torque these on, and then put a little oil in and slap our valve cover on to torque those at 12 newton meters, and then we'll get to the exhaust manifold. Okay guys, so my valve cover is on. 12 newton meters so now i'm going to throw in my uh, exhaust manifold here remember uh, as i said before you're going to put a thread lock on it but not on the first three threads of the bolt and then you're going to starting from the center working our way outward in two stages 11 foot pounds and then 15 foot pounds okay guys so my right exhaust manifold is in i went ahead and put the dipstick in as well it goes in between cylinders six and eight all the way down and then just number 15 bolt just kind of tightened it in that's it so pretty much now we're done. Just an uh, intake manifold I'll put in whenever I put the engine back on. And I'll go ahead and give y'all a torque spec for that later as well. And that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe. More videos to come.